the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey, hey, welcome back everybody. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a review on hostile officers and hostile hunting. And it seems that every year, once a year at least, I've got to remake this video, but I think that's okay. Where we need to talk about where the Primo crews for you to be using to fight various hostiles across the Star Trek Fleet Command galaxy. Now, if you're a new player, it's pretty simple what you should be doing. It's this. Bam! Look at that transition. We're going to take a look the wrong way. Wow, what an idiot. Right here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next Gen LaForge, Next Gen Crusher, and Chin slash Talon. Now, you can expand beyond this, but if you're a you know low-level player who doesn't like law officers, field training is going to be a way to help you get towards that Pike Moreau loadout. We've talked about for years, and even a lot of my videos still talk about the power of that individual crew. This is going to be the starter set, but let's go beyond the starter set. How about let's talk about something that's really hot topic right now. We discuss it all the time in my Discord. This is my Voyager crew, 5, Neelix, and Grush. Now, this is taking mostly advantage of Neelix's ability, the Doctor's ability, below decks, and of course, Grush for warp range, and then our Lady 5 of 11, simply because her below deck ability is another one. You got a nice mitigation boost, but more importantly, loot. We want to get as much loot as possible and then you know neelix giving us our cost efficiency to our abilities now if you don't have a tier six voyager or tier four i mean you could actually use this loadout at most tier voyagers but a low tier version will be like five kang lorca or five kang khan or five lorca khan combinations of that for hostile hunting and still trying to get as much loot as possible by taking advantage of five of 11's officer ability something that we all encourage everybody to go after this is an example of a very specific crew set. And what you find in today's version of Star Trek Fleet Command is that we no longer can rely on just the general run. And I think that's a good thing. From a game perspective, a game should have variance. It should have, you know, thought that has to go into every action that you're doing. Now, it doesn't mean it needs to be complicated, but it does need to be different. You don't just need to use the same hostile crew with everything. And we no longer do. So this was one example. Let's go to another one. How about that? This is... A new crew that just came out past couple months for hostile hunting, just general hostiles. So the reason we use full synergy for Janeway, and we don't have to have it be that man right there. If you don't have Chakotay, you can use the rares. For example, Harry Kim, just as effective, especially if you're hostile grinding, valuable here. The key is how Janeway works, where she will take your shield bypass up to 100% instead of its natural 80, giving you a very effective anti-hostile crew that works against freebooters, regular hostiles, faction hostiles. And the only place that it's not going to be super amazing is hitting some of you know the traders. But the benefit is you're still going to get you know a good effect and traders are kind of met anyway. They only got one weapon, so they're not going to really work on you know murking you. They're not going to just wipe the floor with you anyway. So it's an effective crew. And this is a more recent one, but you can use this against Dominion Hostiles. Like I said, Freebooters, regular uh, Federation, Klingon, Romulan Hostiles. It's an effective crew. You can even use it against Borg Probes. Though I wouldn't say it's the most effective Borg Probe killing crew that we found. But depending on what tier you have, what levels you have, it's effective for all levels. So, just a thought. Let's keep it moving, though. It's not just here. We're going to discard those changes. You see, I've got another one here. I want to go back to the Classics. You players who are out there grinding Borg pros, but you say, Rev, look, you never make content for the low levels, even though that's something I do all the time. Point being, here you go. Classic runs. This is the Vidar with the classic 789 run, which is what we used to run for like the level 29 probes all the time. Because Borg probe grinding is something that you still have to do no matter what level you are. You could be my level and you still need Borg probes. You could be level 28. And guess what? You need board probes. And the great thing about this particular ship, the Vidar, is it wasn't level locked. So you can get it at level 25 and max it at level 25. And when I tell you that that is valuable, that is extremely valuable. And hopefully everybody understands and appreciates that because sadly, you're going to run to a lot of special ships in Star Trek Fleet Command where you simply cannot do that. You're going to be stuck. Looking at you being level 39 with a tier 3 Voyager, a tier 3 Talios, a tier 3 Defiant. Oof. But point being, definitely some value there. And this is the classic run. Now, when you get to the level 35, ooh, now we're kind of going up a little bit. 
Level 35, you can actually swap that around and run many different crews, including this one, Picard Beverly Kath or Pike Moreau Kath or Picard Beverly Talon. Remember, it's all about how Kath works and Kath is simply a rare version of the officer Talon. So it's simply reducing kinetic damage. Click the wrong button there. I'm sorry, that looks stupid right there. <laughs> simply reducing kinetic damage. Now, when Kath is tier four, she's stronger than a maxed Talon. So because my Kath is tier four, I actually use her there. So you see a lot of people use these versus probes. You can also use this against heavies. Pipe and Road Talon is a very common loadout if you're gonna to go to one of the capital systems, Sol, Kronos, and even Romulus and take on the heavies. And we have players now at level 35 with their epic, you know, augers, enterprises using this crew or using the Pipe and Road Talon version of it and taking on heavies. And I was talking to a player on a, one of the newer servers just last week saying that, you know, they are able to get 20 or 30 heavies thanks to these crews and thanks to the fact that we've reached a portion of the game where ships are so daggum strong. Like, do y'all realize? I'm going to swap out real quick. This is my Enterprise that's max, 12.8 million. Do you realize that this is, like, common now? Like, you have players who were in the 30s with 8, 9, 10 million power Enterprises. That was unheard of. When I first started the game, now I've had other accounts that have experienced that, but just to give you a little random history lesson you didn't ask for in Star Trek Fleet Command, like if you like random Star Trek Fleet Command history lessons, you used to have to get an uncommon 42 to hit the 10 mil threshold or an ISS jellyfish. This would not go that high. Like there were times where getting a four or five million power enterprise meant you were the big stick on campus. Exchange that word for something else if it pleases you crazy how the game has changed and grown and it's easier to get an enterprise to max now than it's ever been if you're a level 34 and above player and they're now stronger than they've ever been so you can use a crew like this to go take on those heavies to where you don't necessarily need to use rev's punch-up crew and the punch-up crew was something that was huge for over a year one of my most watched videos and now just not even as needed anymore but let's keep moving let's talk about our overall classic still one of the best in the game even if it doesn't get talked about as much as it once did, Pike Moreau Chin. Now, this is probably going to always remain one of the best loadouts in the game. And I talk about it quite a bit because honestly, it deserves to be talked about. At the same time, it's stronger than it should be. It shouldn't have been as good as it is. To give you the math and explain why, I made this graphic, you know, several videos ago to explain why Pike Moreau Chin and technically Picard Beverly Chin is so strong. It's to how the math of the multiplier works. You take that chin number, which you can see is that yellow number right above my head. You then multiply it by 1.2, which is the 120% between the synergy of what you have with our good friend, Mr. Pike. Then you add that in to one, which is your base number. So 30 times 2.2, and then plus 30 for that research. A 96% energy damage reduction. It's why it's so powerful versus those transports in regular space, the regular transports. Rod's so powerful versus Explorers. You can use this versus early Freebooters if you want to, but I would recommend you do the Picard Beverly one versus Freebooters, not Pipe Moreau. You can use it against Swarms. Uh, I'm sorry, not Swarms. You use it against Dominion Hostiles is where I meant to go for the Explorers or even the Battleships, the Traders, and Freebooters. I mean, it, it goes almost anywhere until it caps out where Chin no longer works against Hostiles level 52 and higher. That is uh, one of the drawbacks to this. They capped it, that it no longer works in deep space. But that's okay, because months ago, we got this. Now, we can still do this same idea. Like, anything I'm going to talk about with Strange New World Officers, you can also basically apply to the new Voyager crew with Janeway as captain. But Pike, full synergy, have at whatever you want to. Now, you have to be specific with this. For example, Strange World Uhura is for attacking battleships when on an interceptor. So you do have to be careful about which loadout you run, because if I were in my Enterprise here, well, one of those officers isn't going to work, thus meaning I'm not getting my mitigation boost I need. But I would still be getting this amazing captain's ability, which brings my shield stopping power at 94% every single round, whereas Janeway can take you to 100% for one round, but can't do it every fight. And then Hammer, of course, is great for your combat defense surveys. I mean, you just, these are the main things you're hitting anyway for faction grinding or the traders. So super valuable. And the good thing about the Strange New World crew is probes, 
Freebooters, Dominion, use Hostiles, regular grinding. It works everywhere effectively. Is it Pipe Moreau Chin great? No, but it's everywhere effectively. And the best thing about this group is you can actually start sourcing them very early in the game thanks to the Mantis loop. If you're doing your Mantis, you have this right here, pull. And everybody just, just go ahead and know. If you did not know, this is hands down one of the best sourced crews in the game, one of the fastest to source, and this will benefit you long term because if you're a player wanting to hit 52 level hostiles and above, you're going to want Strange New Worlds. Yes, you want the Janeway crew too, but this one is accessible and extremely effective. And I use this one basically every day, just like I do my Janeway, because I grind with multiple ships. But the point being, it is extremely valuable to the average player. And this is what we're talking about having that variance. So you do have some crews that are better against some things, specific things that you want to kind of load out and really target individual hostiles. But overall, You've got every hostile in the game covered in this video. Every single one. This covers basically any hostile that exists, though it might not be the best one for a specific hostile, depending on what you're doing. This one is overall the best generic one for level 51 and below hostiles that use energy weapons. Change out Chin for Cath, as in this example, for the Interceptor version. Things that use kinetic weapons, like heavy transports. Then you get over to things like this, where the old school, where, hey, maybe you don't have the big ones, but you still want to take on those Borg probes. Well, this is what we use as a classic that still works great to this day for 29s. And maybe you'd swap this out for something else once you get to the 35s, as in, like, you, you might move back over to this real quick. And then you got this one, brand new, but works super effectively, especially if you have the entire crew unlocked, like having Tom Paris below decks for your mitigation boost, having your shield stopping, and then having, you know, a... Uh, Harry Kim, I feel like he's really undervalued for rep gain. And then even having this right here for the piercing boost with Bellana Torres. So you have options that give you a lot of value in the game now. And sure, it takes time to acquire some of these. But the good news is some of those are able to be acquired early on. Where once you get to that mid-level player, mid-level is around level 34 these days. You should have at least three of these. Four, I'm sorry, four of these all unlocked. And if you need help with doing so, well, guess what? I'm here to help out. Contact me on Discord, Facebook, or even leave a comment on this video. I'll be more than happy to get to you. Hopefully this helps you out. It gives you a basic understanding of what crews are used where. And if you have any questions, let me know. Live long and plunder. Stay safe for the Space Cowboys. Deuces, ask me. Go get you some DQ hostiles done or use the 5 Kang Lorca version. Q below decks. Or 5 Con Lorca because I know all y'all are always asking me about this one. See you on the next episode, and uh, hopefully we'll have more good things from Scopely. We'll see. An even better outro than the intro. For the Empire and glory to your house.